Welcome to The Crossing Church. This is the version of The Crossing that goes where you go and delivers what you need. Fresh perspectives on faith and Jesus with practical, real-life next steps built in. This is your place to explore faith and experience the life-changing ways of Jesus. Hello, everyone. My name is Omar Garcia, and I'm the Grow Pastor here at The Crossing. And we are so glad that you're joining us today. We are concluding our series, Cancel, where we've looked at the importance of not canceling each other like we're seeing in mainstream and social media, but instead canceling the things that are holding us back from experiencing the lives we know we're meant to live. In this series, we've looked at the importance of canceling consumerism, canceling isolation, canceling criticism and anxiety. And today, we're gonna conclude our series by learning how we can cancel hurry in our lives. If you're interested, you can always go back and watch the messages online on our website or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, when you think of busyness and hurry, what comes to mind? Maybe it's something like this. Can any of you relate? This video does such a great job of capturing the hurry that many of us find ourselves in. USA Today published a multi-year poll in 2008 to determine how people perceive time and their own busyness. And it found that in each consecutive year since 1987, people reported that they are busier than the year before, with 69% responding that they're either busy, very busy, and with only 8% responding that they're not very busy at all. Now, women reported being busier than men, and those between the ages of 30 to 60 were the busiest. When the respondents were asked what they were sacrificing for their busyness, 56% said sleep, 52% said recreation, 51% said hobbies, 44% said friends, and 30% said family. In 1987, 50% said they ate at least one family meal every day. By 2008, that figure had declined to 20%. And so I want you to take a moment and think back to a time that you were in a hurry. Now, for some of us, you were literally in a hurry before you started watching this video and you're trying to catch your breath right now. And as you think back to a time when you were in a hurry, what were the feelings that you were having? Were they positive or negative? And I'm gonna be totally honest and transparent with you. One of the worst and some of the worst memories that I've ever had have been when I was in a hurry. I've said things and I've treated people in ways that I shouldn't have. And when I think back to those times that I was in a hurry, it has been when I was trying to get to places on time. And I personally hate, 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 hate being late to things. And we just recently took a trip to Yosemite as a family. And instead of packing the van before, the night before, I decided that it would be a good idea to pack the van the morning of our departure. Oh, and did I mention that I like to pack my own bag the same day we live, leave for our trips? And oh, did I mention that we were going camping? Yes, we were going camping. And for, for those of you that have gone camping before, you know the list of camping is next level. And so imagine trying to get your four kids fed and ready, packing a van to go camping, all before the scheduled time that we're supposed to meet our friends at one of our favorite restaurants called Cracker Barrel. And so my wife and I were frantic trying to pack up the van and the kids and trying to make sure we're not late. And so, well, we ended up being an hour late, but luckily our friends have lots of kids too and they ended up being late as well. Needless to say, we missed some great family moments because we were in such a hurry. My wife, Allie and I would have loved to sit down, have breakfast as a family, debrief the day that we were gonna have in Yosemite and pray together. But instead, we were in such a hurry. And the worst is when you're in a hurry and you can't find your keys. Has this happened to anyone before? You're searching your whole house for your keys, watching as the minutes dwindle down in the clock, knowing that you're gonna be late to your next appointment. And so you're yelling at your kids and blaming your wife for losing them. And so many of us grew up believing that the fast, that faster is better. The faster that we hurried to something or we got to something, the better. The faster that we got done with school, the better. The faster that the kids 
uh, walked, the better. The sooner that we can get them into sports, the better. And so hurry is seen as a trophy to wave around. Look how busy I am and look how important I am. And so we overpack our schedules in the attempt to live life to the full. But instead, you're wondering, why am I so tired and so exhausted? Some of us have become addicted to busyness and hurry without even realizing it. Isn't that true? We go to soccer games, to dropping off to, uh, to school, to date nights at Fashion Island, to the beach, to vacations, not to mention the endless birthday parties that we have to go to because there's so many kids everywhere. And because you're exhausted from the fast pace of life, you don't want to do any of it. And so how many of you wish you could hit pause and, on, the, on your life and take a break? And so the question becomes, how do we slow down and cancel the hurry that we find ourselves in? And that's what we're going to be looking at today. God didn't design us to live life in a state of busyness and hurry that some of us find ourselves in. Now, I do want to point out that there are some times in life that you should hurry. Like, for example, husbands, if your wife is in labor, you should probably hurry to the hospital. Or if someone is hurt and there's an emergency, then you should probably make sure that you get them there as quickly as possible to the hospital. Now, not to say, well, I can't do that because I heard a sermon once on hurry, and hurrying is bad. And that's not the type of hurry that we're talking about here. We're talking about when we live in a constant state of hurry that we miss the precious moments that are happening right in front of us. The type of hurry that keeps us from actually experiencing the life that we know we should have, life to the full, because moving too fast is, is our problem. And so I'm getting to the point where in my life that I'm not the youngest person in the room anymore. And I'm honestly starting to get kind of old. So for example, when I was a kid, I used to use something called a VHS tape to watch movies. Anybody else? And you used to have to take the VHS tape and put it into a VCR. Who remembers a VCR? And those of us that have ever used a VCR remember the rewind and fast forward buttons. And I remember I would have to fast forward uh, hit the fast forward button to get to my favorite spots in a movie. And the people and characters that were in the movie would move all fast. And sometimes I would actually fast forward past the part that I wanted to watch. And so I would have to rewind. And so living life in a hurry is a lot like pushing fast forward on your life. Trying to get to the good part, only to realize that the good part never comes because you don't stop hitting the fast forward button. And when we do get to the good part, sometimes we fast forward past it because our lives are moving too fast to actually enjoy it. And so in order to cancel hurry successfully from our lives, we have to understand what it's motivating it. And so let's look at some causes of hurry and busyness. Hurry and busyness can be motivated by our fear to fail. And so for some of us, our fear to fail is what is causing us to overpack our schedules with so much and be in such a hurry. I have, I have to make a confession. I'm a perfectionist. And so on the surface, perfectionism looks like an admirable quality. I don't know if you know this, but counselors and therapists see perfectionism as a major cognitive distortion. And at the heart of the fear is the fear of failing. I find myself struggling with busyness and hurry because I don't want to fail. And this may also be the case for you. Another motivator to busyness and hurry is our fear of being rejected by those that we love and respect. For some of us, our busyness and hurry are motivated by our fear of being rejected. Our schedules are packed because we don't want to say no to enough social events and favors. We want to appease everybody. And so we say yes to every event, every hangout, and then we wonder why we're so exhausted. Our schedules have become hectic because we want to appease and gain the respect of those around us. And so hurry and busyness can also come from trying to find your identity in what you do rather than from God. For some of us, we find ourselves overwhelmed with busy schedules because we find our identity not from God, but what we do. We find our identity in what we do and we tend to overpack our schedules with activities. And any time that we put anything in front of God, it's called an idol. And when we idolize something or our achievements uh, rather than God, we are running into the danger of overpacking our schedules. Or maybe our hurry is motivated by our need for next or more, because we're naturally wired for more. 
we tend to take on too much without realizing it. And this leads us uh, to be in more of a hurry in life because we're trying to go from thing to thing as fast as we can. We live for the weekends and always count down to Friday. But when we do this, we miss the four days that lead up to it. And if you keep hurrying to the next experience or moment, you're gonna miss the one you're in. And so there's a story in the Bible where Jesus confronts a woman named Martha who's letting her busyness and hurry rob her of her meaningful and impactful life. It's found in Luke 10, 38 through 42. And here's what it says. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. We can see from this story that Jesus and his disciples are visiting two women named Mary and Martha. These two women were gracious enough to open up their homes to Jesus and his 12 disciples. Can you imagine what that must have been like to prepare food and prepare your home for that many people? It took a lot of preparation. And so Martha is working really hard at completing her checklist and she looks over and her sister Mary is sitting down at the feet of Jesus. And you know, Martha is thinking to herself, Oh, my beautiful sister at the feet of Jesus, how wise and smart she is to intently be listening to his word. No, that's not what she said. So if you look at verse 40, it says, Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. And so we see in her busyness and worry, it was more difficult for Martha to focus on God. And so when I'm in a hurry, I find that it's more difficult to focus on God. In all the hurry, of making sure that everything was prepared, Martha missed that Jesus was her guest. Even in trying to do good, Martha missed the most important part, connecting with God. The God of the universe was sitting in her room and she was more concerned about what others would think about how clean her house was and how good her food was. Hurry keeps us from a deep and satisfying connection to God. We also see from the story that Martha was struggling to connect with her guest because she was in such a hurry to get her chores done. And so when I'm in a hurry, it's more difficult to focus on others. But in doing this, she missed the connections and conversations she could have had with the people around her. She was more concerned about the process rather than the people that were involved. And so relationships take investment and time that you can't make when you're too busy or living life in a hurry. We also see Mary saying some things that she probably regretted after the fact. She goes to Jesus and says, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. And so when I'm in a hurry, I tend to say things I don't mean. There are two things that stick out to me about the way that Martha handled this situation. The first is that she starts doubting whether Jesus really cares for her. She says, Jesus, don't you care? She started to question whether Jesus actually cared about the situation she was in. The other thing is that she goes to Jesus and not Mary directly. She's basically trying to throw Mary under the bus. But Jesus' answer, answer is totally epic. He answers Martha by saying, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. And so when I'm in a hurry, I tend to make more mistakes. We can see that Martha made some mistakes in her busyness and hurry. Jesus lovingly points out to Martha that Mary had chosen the right thing to do at that moment. So how do we overcome busyness and worry in our lives? There's a few practical things that you can do to cancel hurry. The first thing that you can do is to slow down. Some of us have to physically Slow down, we're moving too fast. You need to stop driving so fast. I don't know about you, but there was a season not that long ago that I was living life busier and in more of a hurry than ever. My wife was pregnant with our fourth child 
and she was working a full-time job. I was working 50 plus hours a week at a mega church and our kids were taking swim lessons, dance classes, and gymnastics. We had Disney passes, so we were constantly at the happiest place on earth, and we were in between church events, school, birthday parties, and going back to Las Vegas to visit family and friends. We were in this whirlwind and tornado of activity, and then nothing, literally nothing. Do we all remember this? March 2020, COVID lockdowns, and honestly, it still feels like a weird dream. Every single thing stopped, and most of us didn't know what to do with ourselves. Nearly every family started going on multiple walks around the neighborhood. Alternate universe type of stuff, right? But after a while, we were all able to start new routines, and we realized that the slowed down pace of life wasn't so bad after all. And I'll be honest, I sort of miss it. Who agrees with me? And so it's amazing how quickly the busyness picked back up and we became slaves to our Google calendars again. And we don't need to wait for another government mandate to tell us to rest. If you wanna have victory over our busyness and hurry in life, we need to slow down. Psalm 46.10 says, be still and know that I am God. Look at the verse closely. It says, be still. According to this verse, how do we get to know God? By being still. We need to be still and slow down in order to know and experience God. The Bible describes the voice of God as a still, small voice. And it becomes infinitely more difficult to hear the voice of God when you're in a hurry or a whirlwind. And so how do we begin to slow down our lives? By building margin into our lives. And that's the second thing I wanna tell you guys about. And so having and building margin into your life is vital to canceling hurry. Margin is having enough space in between events and activities that you have planned. Margin gives you the ability to do what you want when you want to do it. It's the space to be able to take your kids on a bike ride or go to the beach and read a book or go surfing or go spend time with friends or most important, spend time with God. When you have margin in your life, you won't be so anxious or feel like you're in such a hurry. And when you have margin, you won't be running around to your next appointment trying to figure out where your keys are. Does this happen to anybody? No, just me? <laughs> and so it's difficult to say yes to the things that we want to say yes to when you don't have margin. A few weeks ago, Andrew taught a message on being a contributor rather than a consumer. And many of us heard that message and jumped into a serving team. But for some of you, though you really wanted to help, you weren't able to jump in because you're too busy. You're too busy juggling the 5,000 commitments that you said yes to. And it's such, so much harder to be a Mary when your calendar looks like Martha's. In order to build margin into our lives, we really have to look at where our time is going. What if you made a pie graph and figured out how you spend your time? What would it say? Sleeping? Working? Driving in traffic? For most of us in California? or wherever you're at, there, is there enough margin there for you to be available to do the things that God is telling you to do, for the unexpected things that life throws your way? Another way to combat busyness and hurry is to take a regular Sabbath. This is also a great way to build some margin into your life. So taking a regular Sabbath is one of the major ways to combat hurry and busyness. And some of us hear that word Sabbath and we autom automatically get intimidated. Like it's only reserved for the holiest people. But I wanna encourage you that taking a Sabbath is not that difficult and it's something that is vital to having a true relationship with God and true communion with God. Listen to what it says in Genesis 2-3. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. God sets the example for us here. He created the earth and the entire universe in six days. And it's important to point out that even the God of the universe rested on the seventh day. And he wants, to, wants us to do the same thing and wants our lives to, to reflect that same example. We are to work for six days and then rest on the seventh because God wants us to know the importance of slowing down and taking a break. We need to rest from all the busyness and hurry that we find ourselves in. 
but there's more to Sabbath than just taking a break. It's the chance to recenter your heart and mind to God by focusing solely on him. I personally try to take my Sabbaths from 6 p.m. on Thursday to 6 p.m. on Fridays. And I'll be the first to admit that taking a Sabbath is not easy. It's one of the hardest parts for me in knowing that I could be getting so much more done. But another part of taking a Sabbath is having faith and trust in God that he'll go before you and take care of all the work that needs to be done. When we don't observe the Sabbath, we run into the danger of letting our busyness become an idol or something that we put in front of God. And lastly, to cancel hurry and busyness from our lives, we need to be present. We need to practice being present wherever we are. When we are in a hurry, it's really difficult to be present. So listen to this quote from John Ordberg from his book, The Life You've Always Wanted. For many of us, the great danger is not that we will renounce our faith. It is that we will become so distracted and rushed and preoccupied that we will settle for a mediocre version of it. We will just skim our lives instead of actually living them. Some of us are not even here and present right now. You're more focused on what you're gonna eat uh, next than actually eating the spiritual food that God wants to provide you right now. We go from thing to thing without actually being in them, without actually being engaged in them. We take our picture for social media and are happy after everyone thinks that we're having a great time. And so for some of us in the room, in order to be truly present in our lives, we need to put down our phone and get off of social media. I am so guilty of this. Have you ever heard of doom scrolling? It's when you spend excessive amounts of time looking at negative news. And some of us need to get back our lives by taking a break from social media. Don't live your life half-hearted anymore. The people in your life need you and what you have to offer. Not someone who's physically there, but is mentally scrolling social media. And so when we start to put all these things into practice, we begin to experience one of God's greatest promises. Nicole, in her message last week, referred to Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. There is nothing better than experiencing the gift of God's peace in our lives. And God wants to bless you with his peace. Listen to what it says in Psalms 29, 11. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. God wants to bless you and I with a supernatural peace, one that transcends all understanding. And so how do we enter this peace? Isaiah 26.3 tells us, You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. And so God's promises keep us in perfect peace if our minds are steadfast to him. So what does it mean to be steadfast? It means to be firmly fixed and not subject to change, to be firm in belief and determination, and to be loyal and faithful. God wants us to be firmly fixed on him. He wants us to be loyal and faithful to him in his plans for our lives. But if we live our lives in a constant hurry, we're going to miss the most important thing of all, a real and deep connection to God and those around us. There's a quote from Corey Ten Boom. If the devil cannot make us bad, he will make us busy. Martha, in our story earlier, had all the best intentions. She wanted to provide her guest with great hospitality, but she let her process affect the connection that she was having with God and the people around her. And so some of us are so busy that we don't have enough time to spend with God today. We hear great sermons about contributing rather than consuming, and we want to jump in and serve the church, but we can't because we're too busy. But you have a choice today to get your life back, to gain back control from all the busyness and hurry that has robbed you and your chance of having a life of meaning and substance. Let's become more like Mary and choose the right thing to remove all of the busyness and hurry from our lives and sit at the feet of Jesus. I've shared with you before how I lost my stepdad to COVID not that long ago. And as I continue to navigate those feelings and I look back at my relationship with him, my main regret is that I didn't spend more time with him before he passed. 
I was in such a hurry to fulfill my own desires that I didn't make time to text and call him more. And I think of all the conversations that we could have had if I had just been in less of a hurry. At the end of our lives, we're not gonna complain about loving people too much. Instead, we're gonna regret not spending enough time with the people that we love. For some of us, if we don't slow down and take a breath, we're gonna actually miss living our lives. And we're gonna wake up one day wishing we could go back and do things differently. But there's always hope in Jesus. Listen to this amazing promise that Jesus gives us in Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. God promises to give us the rest from hurry and all the busyness that we find in this world. And this is a promise that is available to us right now, today. In this very moment, we simply just need to be willing to go to him. Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you for who you are, Lord, and coming and dying on the cross for us, Lord. And I pray right now that as people, we don't miss the point by being in such a hurry that we miss a connection with you, Lord, and we miss a connection with the people that we love so much. And so, Lord, I pray that as we head out today, that we can take some of the things that we've learned and apply them to our lives. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great one, everybody. When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love To the lies, I'm not afraid to leave my past behind. Oh, I won't be shaken. No, oh, I won't be shaken. Cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand. Stand a chance when I stand in your love
Hi, thank you so much for being with us today. My name is Nicole Romero. I get to be one of the pastors here at The Crossing. And The Crossing is the place for you to explore faith and experience the life-changing ways of Jesus. And the way we do that is we each take the next right step for us in this life of faith. So we made a couple next steps just for you. The first one I want to tell you about is called The Pathways to God, and it is a free resource that you can download right now. And it's just a really fun way for you to look at some different ways that you can connect with God in your regular everyday life. So please, go download it right now. Use the QR code or the link in the description. And then the next right step for you may be, no, not maybe, I'm sure it will be. We've got a new series called So Good starting on October 16th, and it is going to be so good. It is on the book of Colossians in the Bible, and we are going to be learning about who Jesus is in our lives and in the world. We've made a special resource to go along with it. It's a book for you to study the entire book of Colossians along with us. We also have a new season of small groups starting so that we can go through this together and really study and learn and have our lives be changed in the best possible ways. It is going to be so good participate with us. And you can come to campus and get a book or you can get the resource online. It is for you to start to study and learn who Jesus can really be in your life. And then October 29th, we have one of our biggest events of the year happening. It is called Hollow Weekend. Hollow Weekend is like a carnival that gets set up on our plaza where kids, families can come and enjoy a great night of candy and there's a rock climbing wall and a spooky room and there's going to be video games and I think there's an obstacle course and there's balloon animal makers and there's like tons of games that you can play and all of it has candy involved. And so we would love to have you come be a part of this. This is an event you can invite anybody to and have such a good time. Go to thecrossing.com slash Weekend to register so that we know you're coming and we can make sure we've got all the best things for you. And then I want to just say a huge thank you to all of you who give to The Crossing, who took the step to trust God and be generous with what you've been given. Because of you and what you've done to give to The Crossing, you have changed people's lives. I was just talking to one of our volunteers who the first time they came was to Hollow Weekend, just because they didn't normally go to church, but they tried that event. And they thought, oh, I actually kind of like this place. And they started coming to church and now they volunteer, and their whole life has been transformed. They've got friends that they didn't have before and a hope they didn't have before because you gave to The Crossing. If you don't give to The Crossing yet, but you'd like to be a part of changing people's lives, please go to thecrossing.com give and give a donation today. It will change someone's life. You never know what resource or event or moment with a pastor can really help someone, and you giving to this place helps make those little things possible. So thank you so much for participating in this way. And thank you just for being here with us online today. We would love to be a part of your life every day. Please follow us on all the social medias. And we will see you online all the time and on campus, Sundays at 9.15 and 11.15.